Hey guys, welcome back. This is Linux Fundamentals Part 1. Linux is just another operating system and one of the most popular in the world, powering smart cars, Android devices, supercomputers, enterprise servers, and more. Task 2 Where is Linux used? There's a good chance you've already used Linux in some form or another. Linux powers things such as websites, car entertainments, point of sale, traffic lights, etc. Similar to you have different versions of Windows like 7 or 8 or 10, there's many versions of Linux. Two good examples and common are Ubuntu and Debian. Research the question. What year was the first release of Linux operating system? You can go out to the internet. Here you can already see in the search results the answer is already depicted. And if I open up the first one in my browser, which is Wikipedia, you can see the answer and copy and paste. Task 3. How to deploy or start your machine. If you've been following along, you already know how to do this. You click the green start button here in the top right hand corner. An active machine information card will pop up once it's loaded with your IP address for the VM or the virtual machine and your 2 hour expire timer or countdown will appear. This is also where you'll find your terminate button which terminates that VM or virtual machine that you've just loaded. And at the bottom of your screen, or split screen, here, looks like a power button. That's how you terminate your attack box. So there's two machines to terminate. Go up to the top, click Start Machine. You get the split view screen. Task 4, running your first few commands. Read through this, make sure you understand. It's straightforward. These are common commands. You're going to use them all the time. Get used to it. Be familiar with them. And I click here. Now if you look at the bottom here, there's a THM tag. And right next to it's one that says Linux Fund. If you click on that, it will open up your Linux terminal for the examples. This is what the terminal will look like. Echo outputs any text that you provide. Who am I? Finds out who's the current user logged in as. Here you can see I'm typing echo hello friend. I'm even spelling it incorrectly on purpose just to show you that the machine will output whatever you type into it after echo. And if I type in who am I, I'm try hack me. Questions. If we wanted the output text try hack me, what would our command be? It's echo try hack me. And if I do it here and I misspell it again, you'll see that it outputs it exactly as I typed it. What is the username of who you're logged in as on the deployed machine? We've already done that. If I type who am I, it's try hack me. Task 5, interacting with the file system. Being able to navigate the machine that you logged into via the terminal is very important and something you must become familiar with. These are very common commands. LS, which is a listing files in the current directory. Read through the description. CD, change our directory. 
which basically means you're moving around, outputting the contents of a file, you use the cat command. And if you want to find the full path you use of your current working directory, you use PWD, print working directory. Questions on the Linux machine that you deployed, how many folders are there? If I go over to the terminal and I type in ls, there's four folders. Which directory contains a file? There's a few ways in which to do this. I can say cat folder 1, but you can see its output is is a directory and if I continue doing it for cat folder 2 or 3 and 4 I get the same output now there's an alternative to this I can CD into folder 1 as you can see and I LS list the contents and there's nothing now if I CD back out and then I CD into folder 2 and the ls, there's nothing visible, if I cd back out, now there's another alternative to doing this, if I say ls and folder 3, there's no output, and if I ls folder 4, there's an output of a folder or a file, note.txt, so your answer is folder 4, and what is the contents of this file? I'm going to move into folder 4, cd folder 4, and ls to list it. There's note.txt, and if I use the cat note.txt, there's it. Hello world. Use the cd commands to navigate to the file and find out the new current working directory. What is the path? We've already done this. Just type pwd for print working directory, and there's your path. Task 6, searching for files, read through the article, using the find command, it's pretty straightforward, how to use find, some of the examples in this virtual machine seem to be slightly different you'll see in my outputs if I say find name passwords.txt I don't get anything don't panic I'm gonna cd back out of the folder 4 and try running the same command again find name passwords.txt and nothing appears doesn't worry me if you use a wild card in your search it searches for anything that has for example a .txt so if I say find name pass oh, sorry find name asterisk .txt there you can see it finds what we've already found in folder 4 the note.txt using grep Grep allows you to search the contents of a file for specific values. So if I say, like the example, the access log numbers differ slightly again, don't worry. And if I use grep, use grep on access log to find the flag that has a prefix of THM. What is the flag? So if I type grep, the prefix THM in quotation marks, access logs the file, there you can see is the flag, copy and paste. Task 7, an introduction to shell operators. These are common shell operators that allow you to background your terminal you can combine multiple commands together in your terminal 
read through the descriptions, make sure you understand what they do and how they can benefit you and your work. These operators are also like redirectors where you can append a file which basically means add on to the back end of a file if you read through the description that they've provided this will become very clear questions if we wanted to run a command in the background what operator would we use that's the first one this operator backgrounds your terminal if I wanted to replace the contents of a file name passwords with the word passwords one two three it's echo passwords one two three the greater than two passwords now if you wanted to add the trihecme to the file name passwords you use the double greater than symbol which appends it no answer needed Task 8, Conclusions and Summaries. Make sure you go through these Linux commands. Be familiar with them. Write them down. Take good notes. You're always going to be using these commands. You can terminate your machine. And thank you for watching. That's the room completed. Task 9 is no answer needed.